All right, like we told you earlier, we shall not be able to bring to you Health Corner this Monday, but we shall be focusing on something of utmost national importance. Now, this gentleman joining us live in studio at this time is fresh from announcing a 10 billion package for political, a rather 10 billion package for political parties. And the government of the Republic of Uganda has released that money to fund political parties in parliament. In the run to this announcement and after the news, uh, it was a top story this evening and everyone has been calling and asking how are they going to share the money. And as well, his organization is the most talked about in the run to the 2016 uh, general elections. Uh, this evening, we're joined live in studio by Electoral Commission Chief Engineer Dr. Badru Chigun, who shall be talking about a number of issues in regard to the voters' registration update. Doctor, welcome to uh, WBS TV. Thank you very much. All right, let, let's start off on what everyone wants to hear this evening. You're <laughs> just a, a Mugole from announcing the 10 billion uh, shillings received by your commission uh, to, to fund political parties. Let's talk about that money. What exactly is it going to do? Well, uh, it is money provided under the law uh, in the Political Parties and Organizations Act. It is provided the government should make money available to political parties, particularly those in parliament, uh, for their political activities or electoral activities. And uh, they, I, I don't have to break down the details, but at least for political activities, uh, as you know, we are in the run up, run down to uh, the general elections, so political parties have quite a bit to expend money on. Uh, therefore, this is a good gesture. The first time ever uh, our government to come through with such. And uh, I think political parties must be very appreciative. Uh, though in the past we've had funding to political parties, but in indirect form, and still has always come through the Electoral Commission. So th this is the first package ever to go directly to them. Okay. Uh, we know that there are a number of political parties that are represented in Parliament. We have the National Resistance Movement, the Democratic Party, the Forum for Democratic Change, GEMA, and the Conservative Party. Who is going to take what percentage? Well, the, according to the official legal equation, it is the basis of the strength of a political party in parliament will be a key factor. Uh, I can use an example. If a, a party has one member in parliament, okay. and there are, say, 300 members, I'm using it as an example. It is one over 300 multiplied by 10 billion, which is somewhere around 33 uh, million shillings. So for that particular party with one candidate, uh, but as you go building up in numbers, uh, representing that particular party, political party, the percentage actually increases, and uh, it will be shared out that way. And we have started already rolling out the, the amounts. Okay. And uh, you will be facing questions in regard to accountability for the money. How is the Electoral Commission going to ensure proper accountability? Because these are public funds and uh, given in public trust. Let's talk about accountability for the money that will be received by the different political parties. Well, uh, there is a call for accountability. Even after general elections, we normally are uh, supposed to get uh, the pa parties that have participated at, pa at presidential level. Uh, to account for funds that is extended to them. Of course, most times we extend about 20 million for presidential candidates in cash, uh, let alone what we extend in kind. Uh, they account on how they spend that money. And even this money, they're going to have to account for it. Uh, and what, what political activities uh, will warrant spending the kind of money, they will come down because the Attorney General uh, is looking and you'll be interested in how this money is spent. So let the recipient parties be responsible. Uh, otherwise, they may not deserve such a, a gesture if time around, next time. Okay. So this is the test case. Uh, it's the first time such chunk of money has ever been made available. So we must congratulate uh, the government for coming through with such uh, as called for in the law. Okay. okay. Uh, let's talk about the parties that are not represented in Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that you, the electoral activities that you, you, uh, you superintend over involves a number of political parties that many times may not be lucky to have a member of Parliament. What plans does the Commission have for them in regards to funding? 
<laughs> well, the uh, government has made available uh, about half a billion shillings to the activities of the National Consulted Fora. The National Consulted Fora is a forum which constitutes a representation from each registered political party. There are 29 political parties registered, including those which are in parliament. So that's the kind of fund which is available now when you talk about uh, general activities of an, uh, a forum. Uh, but it's not the kind of money that you just dish out like that. The, there must be activities over which this money is spent. For instance, when we conduct training workshops, as an example, uh, we go uh, around different parts of this country, uh, t taking the, the, this novice national consultative uh, creation around the country. Uh, money is spent on such activities, uh, but not uh, give me money to go around my small party or my big party, whatever. So those parties, they might look small now, but they'll be bigger uh, in future. Okay. So it's up to them uh, that came up with these parties to fend for themselves to make sure they get represented in parliament. Uh, that's the easiest equation that can be used to dispense money, which comes from government. That is, you must have representation in parliament uh, to deserve uh, whenever such opportunities come. Okay. <laughs> All right, if you have just joined us, we, we're talking to Electoral Commission Boss Engineer Dr. Badu Chigunda about the roadmap to uh, rather 2016. I know there are people who have a lot of questions. We shall be talking later more in depth about the voters' uh, registration and update exercise that's going on. It's uh, occupying a lot of discussion in the media platforms across the country. Tonight, we have the gentleman at the helm of it all live in studio. Uh, finally, on, on the issue of funding, Engineer, let, let's conclude on the question that has been raised about the ability of the Electoral Commission to control control the way political parties generate and actually use money. Uh, many times you have appeared before committees of parliament, in the media, people have raised questions about the capability of your commission to actually crack the whip, on especially they keep mentioning the ruling party. Did you have any powers to that effect? How do you handle that? No, it's, it's not a power only to the ruling party. It's, as long as you're a party, which is in uh, a political participation in this country, and as long as you are worth the name, you're supposed to account for the money that you gather yourself and whatever may be given to you by, by government. So I don't have to get a, a, a whip. Okay. My whip is, first of all, I exercise natural justice. In other words, we write to you and ask you to account. If you don't account at the time we've asked you, we actually go through the, uh, the reminder process, which is part of natural justice. But ultimately, if not, nothing comes out of you, the next action is to recommend to the High Court for your deregistration. And we have already demonstrated that. Uh, we've got 10 political parties which are deregistered. The first ever commission on this continent to ever uh, deregister political parties. Okay. It, it is a, a milestone. All right. Uh, Doctor, let's, let's focus on what really seems to be occupying debate right now, the, the roadmap to 2016, to the 2016 general elections. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said earlier, your commission is the most talked about by political stakeholders from across uh, the political divide. What, what exactly is preoccupying the commission right now? Well, uh, out, we have rolled out recently uh, the final stages of the roadmap. And one of the activities uh, in that rolled out roadmap is the update of the voters register. We have commenced that process uh, April 7th and we're going to conclude it April 30th. Come rain, come shine. You know. And that is the time we have allocated. That is the time that we need actually to spend on this activity. Uh, because following that we shall be putting together all that we have captured uh, as additional data, uh, take it through the process of, of vetting whether those who have been registered are actual citizens. Mark you, in the past we have been accused of including non-citizens on the register. But this time around, forget about that. And we're very grateful uh, to have participated into this uh, multi-stakeholder undertaking 
uh, headed by the national coordinator, national coordinator, uh, General uh, Nyakairima. We've done a, a tremendous job for this country and uh, very proud to have been part of it as an institution and as a human being, of course, as a Ugandan to be around this time mm. when the, this fundamental, uh, monumental uh, task takes off. Uh, so, I don't know what more to add. Okay, uh, uh, th that that you ended on the the the, uh, the exercise that you participated in that involved the Ministry of Internal Affairs, mm -hmm. as well had its fair share of questions uh, being raised by uh, people in, in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, the people were quoting the constitution that calls for an independent voters register, and many people think you subjected your commission uh, to a sort of manipulation. What would you respond to that? I don't think we are manipulated uh, in any way. First of all, under the, the Constitution, uh, under elect the, within the Electoral Commission Act, uh, Section 18, we have the powers as a commission to delegate responsibility to an individual organization to carry out any task which is beneficial to the activities of the roadmap. And therefore, within the legal powers, we, we, we delegated the internal affairs, and of course, we participated. Uh, to come up with a national register of persons, of Ugandans, citizens. Okay. And once that is established, because the, can, the cardinal uh, variable is whomever has to vote must be a citizen. But as the Electoral Commission, we had no capability to determine who is a citizen and who is not. So that, given that uh, full proof of a national uh, register of persons who are citizens, why can't we use that data? Uh, we've been privileged to have recently this law, which was passed, Registration of Persons Bill, uh, which really opened door for accessing that kind of information. And that is the modern way. That is the civilized way. If you go to, uh, to these developed countries, they have a national database on all peoples in their country, citizens. Okay. Whatever they want is accessible. If they want to check on you, they can check on you from the national data, uh, database they have by virtue of that card that you own. So Ugandans should be proud that at this time we have achieved what has been a dream for a long time. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the connectivity between the two exercises. Mm -hmm. the, the national information system uh, that resulted in the issuance of national IDs uh, mm -hmm. has ended. Mm -hmm. and, and now the Electoral Commission is uh, uh, starting its voter verification exercise. What are you doing with the information collected earlier? Well, we access that information. Remember, when you, uh, I hope you registered, when you went to register, I'm using you as a, an example, you were asked a question on the form that you filled, indicate your place of preference for voting. Once you indicated that, that is, you, you made that a free will. Nobody forced you. That is the cardinal variable which uh, we utilize uh, to extract information. And that information comes down in a soft form. It does not come down in a national voters register format. We compile it in the format that is fitting within the law of, uh, for purposes of voting. Okay. And uh, then it's that information that we are taking out right now in this update, asking people to look at it. When you come as a prospective voter and you, don't, you can't recall whether you actually already registered, you're given your name. They check on that register and say, oh yes, you have already registered. Don't waste your time. Okay. Uh, go back. If you have not registered, then your information is picked up uh, at that station. Or if there is any error, mark your errors as, as human. Errors are made by humans. The uh, divine is one who forgives. So if there's any error uh, on your a national ID card, if you have already got one, or an error in the spelling of your name, this is the time to correct it. Okay. And appropri appropriate forms are there. Okay. All right, uh, Doctor, sorry to interrupt you right there. We'll be taking a short breather at about this time. We take a short break. But remember, when we come back, you will be able to actually uh, contribute by calling in live in studio. The discussion continues in regard to the roadmap to 2016. We'll take a short break and return in a short while.